Hi there, welcome to chapter 7.3 where we're discussing sample means. The, dis the distinction between chapter 7.2 and 7.3 in 7.2, we talked about sample proportions because we dealt with categorical data. Here, we're going to talk about sample means because we're dealing with quantitative data. So this time, instead of dealing uh, with our p hat values, we're going to be dealing with our x bar values. So this is your overview. You should be able to do all of these by the end of this video or by the end of our in-class session. So let's just jump on in to our sampling distribution of x bar. So again, in this one, we're talking about quantitative variables. So if I consider the mean household earnings for sample sizes of 100, so n equals 100, then look at the population distribution on the left and look at the sampling distribution on the right. Make note of that language and know the difference between a population distribution, a samples distribution, and then a sampling distribution. What do you notice about the description of each? If I cuss the left or if I cuss out the right, what's going on with the center and spread and the shape in each of these distributions. Well, the population's distribution is skewed. Its center is more median than mean. It has a higher variability of spread. But look at what happens when you have your sampling distribution on the right. I've got more of a normal shape, definitely more symmetrical. My mean is uh, more closely, uh, that my center is more closely related to my mean and my spread. Look at that variability. Woo, nice and slim and tight and everything. <laughs> fantastic. But it has a very low variability. So an important thing to note right here from this just visual aid is that averages so our sampling distribution on the right our averages are going to be less variable than individual observations so that's something you should it's an important bit of information you should pull from that slide so a wrap-up of you know what are these sampling distributions of x bar and so here's our you know uh, formal definition in our red but if i talk to you about it just for a second. If we choose hundreds and hundreds or lots of simple random samples in a population, then our sampling distribution of the sample mean, so the sampling distribution of X bar, should be centered at the population mean or mu. It should also be less spread out than the population distribution. Hey, hold the phones. We just saw that in the visual in the previous slide. If you don't believe me, go back and look at that again. So how can we declare this in math notation? If I'm looking at the mean of the sampling distribution, then I should know that um, my the mean of my X bar will also be the mean of my population. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution will be the standard deviation of X bar will be the standard deviation from the population divided by the square root of your sample size, as long as you meet your 10% condition. Again, I'll harp on that 10% condition. Does your sample, is your sample size no more than one tenth of the population uh, size? A sample size that's bigger than one tenth of the population size is not, it's not feasible, it's not a valid um, sample set. It would not meet 10% conditions, so you wouldn't be able to do things like standard deviation and all those fun statistical calculations. Make a note that these facts about mean and standard deviation for X bar, so for mean of the sampling distribution, um, are true no matter what shape the population distribution is. But since I've talked about shape, let's continue uh, talking about shape in general. So, uh, we haven't, we've talked about center, we've talked about spread, but what about our shape? Did you know that the shape of your uh, sampling distribution is going to model the shape of your population distribution? So if your population distribution is normal, then so must the sampling distribution be, no matter your sample size. So your n value could be two, your n value could be 200. If your population was normal, then so should your sampling distribution be. So here's that, as long as you're meeting your condition. So there's a little wrap up, you could copy that for your notes if you needed to, but I think you're ready to begin answering a question about, um, I don't remember what this, oh, okay, so your question is going to cover means of sampling distribution, SRSs, standard deviation of a sampling distribution of X bar, and there is a probability uh, of the mean question as well. So attempt that question to the best of your ability and come back for part two.